everyone, it's Daniel McCabe here at GI Energy again. Today we're shooting the first video in a new series of videos that's talking about solar and battery storage. The first video is going to be a little bit longer than most of the others as we're covering all the frequently asked questions and the first question that we're asking is a very important one. That question is, are solar and batteries really worth it right now? Or should I be buying a battery with my solar system right now? So to answer that question, firstly we need to just take a little look back. So since 2010, there's been a huge amount of solar PV installed here in Australia to the point where there's now over 3 million homes with solar panels on the roof. That's obviously fantastic. It means that Australia has the highest rooftop penetration for solar anywhere in the world. And it also means that lots of home and business owners are saving a lot of money and really helping push that drive towards decarbonisation in Australia. However, it does also present some problems. If you have a look at how the grid is operating now in Australia, you'll see what's commonly referred to as a duck curve. That duck curve on a chart from about 9 a.m. in the morning when solar energy starts working really well, you'll see the export level of energy and the amount of energy that is required from the grid will dip right down through to midday as solar increases and the sun's in the sky and then about three o'clock in the afternoon it will start to dip rise back up again into that period of what we call peak demand where people are coming home from work or home from a school run turning on air cons and other appliances and really pulling a lot of energy from the grid all at once that peak demand is causing big issues for the grid to cope and this is the next challenge that we're seeing in australia and, and of course all around the world as well so a standard solar system is not going to help with that peak demand because as we know the sun starts setting and really from 3 p.m is where you'll see your solar drop off 4 p.m will still be producing a reasonable amount of energy and then depending on the orientation of your solar panels usually by five the energy is quite minimal so solar alone is not going to help with that peak demand and in fact in many ways because of that duck curve it's creating more of a problem as a result of that, energy retailers across the country are focusing more of their charges into what we call time of use tariffs and also now into peak demand tariffs for homeowners. So a peak demand tariff is something that we've seen on large business accounts for many years and we're now starting to see on homeowner bills as well. So a peak demand tariff is where the energy retailer will measure how much energy you use across the day with a meter that's constantly sending data back and then during those peak demand times, which is usually from 4 p.m. through till 9 p.m., but it varies from one area to another, there'll be a threshold set, and if you breach that threshold, essentially there's some penalties there, or peak demand charges that will be replicated across the billing period, and there's starting to be quite large portions of electricity accounts are attributed towards those peak demand charges. A time of use tariff is a similar thing where higher energy charges apply, for peak times during the day. So when you combine those two together, there's a larger percentage of your power bill is gonna be concentrated into those shorter windows of time where the grid is struggling to cope with peak demand, which makes sense, but it doesn't help pay the bills, of course. So a solar battery, you'll be able to store some energy and then use it during those peak times and into the night. With some batteries, you can actually set the time on the battery discharge so that it will only discharge during those times where you're being charged the most amount of money from the grid. So even if there is a requirement during the day for the battery to discharge into the home, it won't do that until it knows that you're being charged more money for power and it will discharge during those more high valuable times for you at home. Not all batteries do that, but some do now have that function and more are starting to include it in their software and hardware. So a battery will start saving you more money because of the changes in the grid. In addition to that, the feed-in tariffs, which is the amount of money that you get paid for solar energy being sold back into the grid, have been decreasing for quite some time now. If you go back to about 2010, there were some retailers in Australia that were paying up to 60 cents. Now those were funded partly by government and partly by retailers, but if you compare that now, the average rate of a feed-in tariff in Australia across the whole country at the time of recording this video is only 7.4 cents. So quite a drastic difference. Even if you go back 18 months with a brand new solar system, you in some areas you could get up to 20 cents, and now, as I say, the average is down to 7.4. So the energy that you can store in a battery is becoming more valuable due to time of use and peak demand tariffs. 
energy that you sell back into the grid is becoming less valuable. So therefore a battery is starting to become a more viable option for lots of people. In addition to those two financial benefits, there's also now additional value from what's called a virtual power plant or commonly referred to as a VPP. A VPP is basically a community of battery owners that are signed up to the same virtual power plant, which is then allowing the grid to take a small amount of energy from their battery during those peak times to help the overall grid deal with peak demand. It is only ever a very small amount of your battery, probably to the point where it's not even noticeable to you, but you will be rewarded for that energy with monetary value. So the VPP will add more financial benefit to your battery system as well. So when you combine all of those three things together, then there's more financial benefits having a battery now than ever. In addition to the financial benefits, there's also a drive towards sustainability like we've never seen before. So lots of homeowners that are contacting us now over the last 18 months and certainly uh, even more frequently in the last three months really want to be grid independent as much as possible and want to be reducing their carbon footprint as much as possible. So having a solar and battery system is much more ecologically friendly than having just a solar system where you're pumping energy back into the grid. If you can store that same energy that you would normally pump back into a grid into a battery and then discharge it during those peak times but also overnight and through till the morning before your solar system starts working again, then you're going to reduce your carbon footprint a lot more than pumping back into the grid and then obviously getting those losses through that system. So that drive towards sustainability is starting to become a lot more apparent. Lastly, the other thing a battery will do is provide blackout protection. So some batteries have better emergency power supply systems than others, so you'd have to do your research there and we can certainly help with that. But if you do get frequent power cuts, then a battery is a good idea because it will give you some backup power for when the grid goes down. In a similar way to setting a timer to discharge during peak times only, some batteries you can also set up a blackout functionality so that you can store a certain amount of your battery and keep it there at all times for when the power does cut. You can even have full blackout mode if you wanted to with some batteries. So if you get really frequent power cuts, your battery will charge up to 100% and remain at 100% until the grid cuts, regardless of whether you need that energy for other things. So blackout protection and grid independence are a huge driver towards people purchasing batteries. So is a solar and battery system really worth it for you right now? Well, that question is subjective and really for you to answer for yourself. When you combine all of the pillars that we've spoken about in this video, so the extra standard savings from storing in the energy and using it later rather than selling it back to grid, peak demand savings that are possibly available for you, the VPP payments that we've discussed where you get paid for having the battery, blackout protection, grid independence, and that sustainable drive, then it's the overall value proposition that you need to consider now if you're looking at a solar battery for your home. If you compare a solar battery purchase to other purchases of similar value, it is a big ticket item, so a good quality battery uh, installation for a home here in Australia will cost anything from around 15,000 up to 25,000, depending on what your install requirements are and depending on how much storage you'd like. And that could be compared to maybe a small bathroom or kitchen renovation, for example. So you'd have to really ask yourself, does a solar battery offer as much value as something like that or another purchase of around that amount? And when you look at how much value you'll actually get from a solar battery over the years, it's really up to you whether you, you think that's going to provide value or not. What we can tell you is that it's more valuable now than it ever has been in the past to buy a solar battery. So um, hopefully this information has been helpful. As I say, there's going to be a lot more videos released which will answer lots of other commonly asked questions for batteries. So if we're missing anything or you've got a question that you can't find in our video response, please yell out. We'll quite happily make a short video to answer it or of course just discuss it with you on the phone or in person, whatever you like. So I hope this has been helpful and um, hopefully you can catch us on the next video. Thanks.